Hey guys, here we're going to cover a bunch of examples applying the general technique we discussed in our VOR interpretation video for figuring out where you are relative to a VOR station. If you haven't already watched that, I'd highly encourage you to do so now and then come back to this video. I'm going to base these examples on some questions that were previously on the FAA private pilot written exam regarding VORs and also cover a few of the more practical applications of this technique. Let's start with some examples where we're given a VOR indication and then based on that, we have to describe the location of the aircraft relative to the VOR. For example, whether we're to the north of the VOR, to the west of the VOR, and so forth. For our first example, let's look at a scenario where the selected course is 030, the course deviation indicator is deflected to the left of the instrument, and we have an upward pointing arrow, or 2 indication. So following the process from our last video, the first step is going to be to draw the VOR. Step two will be to draw the course that is selected, which is 030, which would be a line going through the VOR station in a northeasterly direction. This course has two parts, the first part being the 030 course to the station, and the second part is the 030 course from the station. Step three is to draw a line going perpendicular to our selected course, which will divide up the area around the VOR into two parts, the part that's on the two side and then the part that's on the from side. Step four is to figure out whether we're on the two side or the from side. In this scenario, since we have an upward pointing arrow, we know we're on the two side, which means that we're in either this quadrant or in this quadrant. Step five is to interpret the course deviation indicator. Here, the course deviation indicator is on the 300 side of the instrument, which tells us that the selected course has to be to the west northwest of the airplane. If we were in this quadrant, we see that the course would definitely not be to the west of the airplane courses, on the other hand, to the southeast of the airplane. So that can't be our answer. But if the airplane were anywhere in this quadrant, say it's right here, then if we draw a line from the airplane to the course, the course would be in a 300 or west north westish direction. So the airplane has to be somewhere in here. Now where the airplane is exactly in that quadrant is going to depend on how much the course deviation indicator is deflected off its center. If it's only deflected a little bit, then maybe the airplane is somewhere over here. If it's deflected quite a bit, then the airplane might be over here. But for the purposes of the example, that's not important. Now on the written exam, a question like this is probably going to have several multiple choice selections where You'll need to answer, is the airplane to the north of the station, is it to the east of the station, is it to the south of the station, and so forth. So although the airplane could be here, and although we would most accurately say that in that case the airplane is to the southeast of the station, the most correct answer in this case would be that the airplane is to the south of the VOR. We're always looking to choose the most correct answer on the written exam. Okay, so let's move on to our next example following the same process. Let's say we've selected the 270 course. This time the course deviation indicator is centered and we have a from indication, a downward pointing arrow. So step one is to draw the VOR. Step two is to draw the course with its two parts. So 270 is a line going through the VOR station to the west. And then we have the part that's the 270 to the station and the 270 from the station. Step three is to draw a line going perpendicular to the course so that we can divide up the area around the VOR into the two side and the from side. Step four, we ask are we on the two side or the from side? Since we have a downward pointing arrow, we're on the from side. So that means we're somewhere over here or somewhere over here. Step five, interpret the course deviation indicator. Well, in this case, it's actually really easy because there is no deviation from the selected course, meaning that the needle is completely centered. We know that we're actually on the 270 course in this scenario. So the answer is that the airplane is somewhere on the 270 course from the station. So it could be here, could be here. We don't know how far away the aircraft is from the station. We don't have any information that would tell us that. But what we do know is that the airplane is definitely somewhere to the west of the VOR station. Okay, and to cover one more example of this type, let's say that we have selected the 150 course. The needle is deflected to the right side of the instrument, but this time we have an off indication. So maybe you haven't seen that yet, but let's just progress through the steps and we'll talk about what that means when we get there. So step one, draw the VOR. Step two, draw the course. So 150 will be a course going through the VOR to the southeast. We have our two parts, 150 to the station and 150 from the station. Step three, draw a line perpendicular to the course, which gives us our two side and our from side. Step four, are we on the two side or the from side? Well, in this case, we have neither a two indication nor a from indication. So what that tells us is we have to be somewhere 
along this particular line because on that line we're neither on the two side nor on the from side. We're kind of in this middle ground between the two. Then step five, interpret the course deviation indicator. The course deviation indicator in this scenario is still giving us useful information and we read it just like before. So we say the CDI in this case is on the 240 or southwest side of the instrument, which means that the selected course is to the southwest of the airplane. If the airplane were anywhere on this side of the dashed perpendicular line, then the 150 course would be to the southwest of the airplane. So there's our answer. The airplane is somewhere to the northeast of the VOR. Again, how far it is from the VOR, we don't know that just from the information given. You'll also see an off flag associated with station passage when we're crossing over a VOR station, but that's something you'll cover when you discuss how to track to and from a VOR. Moving on to our next example, we're going to try a slightly different exercise this time. Let's say we're given the location of an airplane relative to a VOR, and we're also given a VOR indicator. We know that the 170 course has been selected, which would go through the VOR looking something like this. We have our two parts, 1702 and 170 from, and then we need to figure out what would the CDI and the two from indicator look like on our VOR indicator. So this is essentially just backwards from what we did before. So let's just fill in the missing pieces from the steps we were using before. So we were drawing a perpendicular line to the selected course. Now we can ask ourselves, well, are we on the to side or the from side? We see here that we're on the from side. Remember this whole area here is the from side. So is that going to be an upward pointing arrow or a downward pointing arrow? From is gonna be downward. And then looking at this picture, we see the selected course is to the east of the aircraft which means that the course deviation indicator will need to be deflected to the east side of the instrument. So here's your answer. This is the VOR indication that you would expect given this position of the airplane and given the fact that the 170 course has been selected. Okay, so those are the types of questions that you'll be required to answer on the private pilot written exam for VOR interpretation. The whole process might seem a bit mechanical and like the type of thing, yeah, I'm not going to be able to do this while I'm in the airplane, which is true. You're not going to start taking out a pen and paper and drawing out these things. But the more examples you do of this on paper, you'll be able to quickly visualize where you are just by looking at what you see on the VOR indicator. So it is actually useful. But at the private pilot level, there's two even more practical scenarios that we want to cover regarding interpreting and using the VOR indication. So let's take a look at those now. The first would be to answer the question of what radial are you on? Now you might have noticed that we actually haven't been using the word radial at all. I've been strictly using the word course to avoid confusion and to give you a really simple method of VOR interpretation without adding in another term. But the term radial is definitely very important. We use that all the time. So what is a radial? Uh, you might already be familiar, but in case you're not, if we draw a VOR, we know that emanating from the VOR, we have 360 radials, kind of like spokes of a wheel, starting from 0, going to 90, 180, 270, and so forth. Each one of those lines is a radial. Now let's relate this to what we were discussing before, which is courses. So let's say I ask you to draw the 120 course from the VOR. As we discussed before, that would just be a line emanating from the VOR in this direction here. This is the 120 course from the station. And all we're going to do is assign that another equivalent name. We're going to say that this is the same as the 120 degree radial. So if you're looking for a definition of radial, there you have it. A radial is the same as a course from the station. So when we're sitting in an airplane, how are we going to figure out what radial that we're on? Suppose that in some example our airplane is situated like this here. We want to figure out what radial the airplane is located on. We can tell from this picture that we're somewhere to the northwest of the VOR, so maybe a 320 radial or so, but we need to figure that out for sure. So using our VOR indicator, the first step is going to be to twist the OBS knob until two things happen. First, we want the CDI to be centered, and second, we want a from indication. Because remember, we're trying to figure out our course from the station. So once we do that twisting, we'll eventually see those two things. So the CDI is centered, and we have a from indication. At that point, our answer is going to be read right over here. Whatever number it shows, that's the radial that we're on. In this case, it's probably something like a 320 radial. So to recap, if we were to draw the 320 course from the VOR over here, that's equivalent to the 320 radial. So that covers radials. The next and final application we'll take a look at is figuring out what course would it take 
in order to go direct to the VOR. So let's say here's our VOR and we're flying along, perhaps we're over here to the west of the VOR, but we don't know where we are. All we know is that we want to somehow fly to this VOR. Now we're not going to talk about the technique of actually controlling the airplane's heading to get us there, but let's talk about the initial steps that would be required to do that. In other words, what course would we have to fly in order to go from our current position to the VOR? So just looking at this picture right now, we can see that the course required to go from the airplane to the VOR is 090. But again, since in this hypothetical scenario we're lost, we need to figure out how to use the VOR indicator to figure this out. We're going to use pretty much the same steps we just covered to figure out what radio we're on with one small difference. So first we're going to twist the OBS knob until we have two things. The CDI is centered and also that we have a two indication. So this is where we have a difference between our last exercise of determining what radial we're on. In that case we were trying to get a from indication but when we're trying to figure out what course would take us direct to the VOR it makes sense we're trying to get a two indication. So what that would look like on the VOR indicator our CDI would be centered and we would have an upward pointing arrow for our two indication. And then as our selected course that would be telling us the course direct to the VOR. That's a pretty common symbol for direct to that you'll find in GPS units. So we'll use that here so you've seen it at least, direct to. So the number that would show up here in the selected course would be 090. So what we would do is turn so that our ground track is in a 090 or due east direction. So finally, to relate this to a topic that we discussed at the end of our last video on VOR interpretation, the reason that we want a two indication for this scenario is to avoid reverse sensing. In theory, we could still track to the VOR if you didn't follow these instructions, if you had set a from indication instead of a to indication, but it's not advisable. It's gonna make your life more confusing. So my recommendation is to always track direct to a VOR with a to indication. So I hope that helps you better understand the theory that we talked about in the last video. But if you have any other examples you'd like me to cover or questions on the examples we covered in this video, please comment below.